Hey, what's up, NBCC? Welcome to this Sunday service. It's a little bit different. I know you are at home. This is what I'm wearing at home right now. Um, and I know you probably are in your pajamas, but we wanted to open up and just let you all know that we love you all. Look, we want to help flatten this curve um, of this pandemic. And so we're having service a little bit different today. So with that being said, I love you all. Um, Stay tuned for the worship. It's going to be phenomenal. You're going to love it. You know, right where you are, if you are in your bedroom, if you are in your car, if you are in your living room, just worship God wherever you are because God is not in the building. God is in us. And so the building may be closed, but the church is always open. So I love you all, and let's get ready to worship. Good morning, New Beginning. Good morning, New Beginning. Good morning. All right, we're going to start with praise and worship this morning. So if you know the song, sing along.
Hallelujah. God is greater, our God is stronger, God, 
God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
secret place where I can be with you and you can make me like you wrap me in your arms wrap me in your arms wrap me in your arms wrap me wrap me in your arms wrap me in your arms wrap me in your arms so take me take me to that place lord to that secret place where i can be with you and you can make me Worship was so intimate. Worship was so special. I pray that you allow worship to really shape your reality right now and not, a, not allow yourself to be um, focused on the reality of what's going on around you because he who keeps his mind stayed on God, he will keep you in perfect peace. So with that being said, next up we have the word and we, the word is coming from Elder Brown on this Sunday. Yes, I said that the word is coming from Elder Brown on a Sunday. So get ready, get your notes out, get your Bibles out, and get ready to dive into this word with Elder Brown. Praise the Lord. We come this morning thanking and praising God for we're going to teach you on his grace and his mercy. For grace is the unmerited favor of God towards man disobedient. And God sent men to save man, but not just men, women. He sent Deborah. He sent Jacob. He sent Ruth. He sent Esther. 
And as we speak on God's grace, grace cometh from God's love. And I'll take you to the scripture of Romans 1, 5, starting at verse 2. And it says, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the holy scriptures concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's power in grace. Hallelujah. Let's go to John chapter 1. Starting with verse 14, we go down to 17. And it reads, The word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we receive, and grace for grace. Hallelujah. For the law was given by Moses, by grace and truth, came by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Grace comes from the love of God. God's love is grace. Grace is the heartbeat of God. I'll give you a good example. God's grace is so important to us that we need it more and more each and every day. I said each and every day. In the book of Job, Satan came up to the third heaven to speak with God. Now listen to this. God did not say get mad, get out of here go home, don't come around here no more. He sat down and talked with Satan, with grace. See, grace is abounding each and every day through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace abounds, hallelujah. And he sat there and talked with Satan, so nice and so calm. And everything Satan said, do, he did, through grace. God did it through his grace. We should be the same way through our grace, the living Jesus that lives inside us. Moved by his grace is sufficient. As he told Paul, his grace is sufficient between you and I. He lives in you and I. His grace can heal. His grace can love beyond measure. And he dealt us all that measure. And it goes beyond that measure. How many measures did he do between you and I? His grace is sufficient. He told Paul, Paul said, Lord, remove this thorn that's in my side. But God, he said, Paul, you don't need it removed. My grace is sufficient in you. My grace heals. My grace loves. My grace is kind. My grace is joy. My grace is hopefulness in me, Christ Jesus, that we live by the Son of God, word, day by day, each and every day. We serve an awesome God. And grace is just the heartbeat of our Father which are in heaven. That's the center point of what we should be like. He spoke to Satan so kind. Satan so said, if you move that hedge, Job will curse you. God didn't say, well, you don't know, but I'm going to do this. No, God said, do whatever, but don't kill him. That's grace, see? Don't kill him. Wow. God took Satan up in heaven at his house, talked with him, so kind, and did exactly what Satan 
told him to do. I'll move the hedge, but don't kill him. You can, do, you can have that, but don't kill him. Wow, that's awesome. See how grace is? Grace even calmed Satan down. Grace even took a hold of Satan and said, wow, look at him. And he had a divine plan to save mankind. God is awesome. Hear me now. God is awesome the way he planned this divine plan because he hidden grace in the blood of Jesus. Grace was hidden in the blood of Jesus. When the enemy came along to hang Jesus on the cross and to kill him. But he didn't know the grace was in the blood. Glory to God. Grace was in his blood because that's the love of God. His blood shed through love for the mankind, for the whole world, through mankind, for the whole world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And when you get baptized and receive Christ as your Lord and Savior and believe and do not doubt, you say, by God's grace. Satan didn't know that. See, grace is loving. Grace never backbiting. Grace ain't jealous. Grace ain't envious. Not knowing that when Jesus died, I don't know if everybody know the whole story, but when he came down there in hell, Belzebub down there said, who killed him? <laughs> who killed him? You weren't supposed to kill him. But Jesus had another job to do, not just saving us from our sins, but he also saved Satan too by going to Belzebub and telling him to hand over the keys. And he had to give the keys back because he stole the keys back in the garden with the serpent. Then those people that was down there in hell that was there before B.C., before Christ, not A.D., B.C., before Christ, they'd been down there a long, 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 long time. Jesus was there to save them. Took some of them out of hell that want to come. And they said when Jesus rose from the dead, through grace, come on now, y'all know this. They seen other people walking the earth that was gone, that was dead years ago, long time ago, generations ago, generations. They all was risen with Christ. Not just Christ himself, through grace is the heart of God's love. Grace is the mercy of God's love. Grace is for the all abiding Father in Christ Jesus to love us all. God's grace takes us to a place where we should never mumble or grumble towards any man, woman, boy, girl, child, or babe. God grace. We don't, when you in God's grace, we don't talk about anybody. We don't backbite anybody. We don't boast in anybody. We just love one another. That's in God's love and through his grace. And his grace was in the blood of Christ. Did you? He came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, our debt he paid. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. He walked it, he right before us. How could you kill somebody that never did anything wrong, that never ever sinned? Elzebub wanted to know who killed him. He wasn't supposed to be here. But Jesus now, Jesus hold the keys to hell and death. Death has no more sting. Through grace 
is a part of God's love where he said, where sin abound, grace even abound more. Let's go to uh, Romans. Oh, hallelujah. This is, is so much to this. I want to tell the whole story, but it'll take almost a week. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Romans 5. I won't be long. Romans, let me get here. Romans 5. I will show you where God Romans 5. I'm going to start at uh, verse 18 through 21. And it goes and it says therefore as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came from all men unto justification of life. For as by one man disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abound, grace did much more abound. Hallelujah. That as sin has reigned unto death, listen to me now, that as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Christ Jesus. You hear what he just said? Where sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life. By Jesus Christ. So if that was going on before Jesus went to hell to get the keys back from the enemy. He came. He knew his righteousness was going to overthrow Satan's evil disposition. Let me put it like that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And he said, through his righteousness, grace abound even the more. Unto, listen to me very carefully, eternal life. So if you're living in God's grace, you're born in, and baptized, and you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you living and walking in Christ Jesus through the grace of God, look what God said, through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ. In other words, the way Enoch walked into heaven with God, you walk into heaven with grace through Jesus Christ. Can you get that? Can you receive that? Same thing, God no respect a person. As he did Enoch, he doing you through his grace. His grace is sufficient. Because Paul wanted it. Lord, remove this thorn. Well, Paul, stop worrying about that. My grace is sufficient in you. God's grace is sufficient in each and every one of us in Christ Jesus. We have no complaints. All we should do is walk in obedience because obedience holds the key to grace. Where there's obedience, God said, there also will be grace. I'm not going to say any more to you. I'm resting my case. I love each and every one of you out there. And I ask you this day, before we leave, to come to New Beginning. See Pastor Jay, a wonderful man, an awesome man of God, a true man of God. He's walking in his father's footsteps. And I guarantee when you get here, you're going to feel the love on the grounds, not in, inside the church, but on the grounds first. You feel the love once you get inside the sanctuary. Awesome. 
but you also feel God's grace because God dwell here too in Jesus name we pray amen so y'all have a good day God bless wow that word on grace was phenomenal thank you elder for that I pray that something was said that will pierce your heart and cause you to live from a, a life a life of grace and a life of God look even though we are not at the physical building there still is a way to sow at NBCC look coming up on the screen now you can sow multiple ways obviously you can't sow the first one but on the next two you can sow you can go to our website www.nbcc8.org slash give and give that way or you can text to give and that number is on the screen that number is 256 472 5425 so there are multiple ways to give so your giving doesn't have to be quarantined either you can still give and you can still sow into NBCC I know service was a little bit different today but we are a church that say we do church different and it's okay to um, do church different especially with the time that we are in but I believe that this too shall pass. I believe that we will be back. And I believe that there will be a harvest at NBCC like never before. Look, if you are a visitor, if you are a guest and you have enjoyed watching us on live stream, how about you come in and check us out in, in live and in person? Because the spirit is in this place and the spirit is in each and every person here. So we love you all. I pray that your week is phenomenally great. I pray that you... Don't allow the virus of fear to attack your heart and attack your mind. I pray that peace covers you because you keep your mind stayed on God. So I love you all. Have a great week. Be blessed and let's be great.